Sunday starts tonight, I have asked Gus to pray for me. Woo! So I'll tell you Yeah, Gus! Yeah, yes. yeah here for Gus. Yeah, for Gus. Woo! Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us all to come together in a night of worship and fellowship. Um, ask that you be with Brandon during the message, that he preach your word and preach it right, and that you also be with us, that we can learn something here and incorporate it into our daily lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Mm-hmm. I like that. I preach it right. Woo! I preach it right, baby. I love that. Um, Brandon. Uh, well, hey, I'm excited that I finally get the chance to share this semester with you guys. Uh, we have talked a lot in this relationship series. We have done friendship, we have done singleness, dating, and tonight we get to talk about the fun little season of engagement. And I want to preface everything that I say tonight with two things. Uh, The first is just some context for all the stories that I'll share tonight, and for anyone who just doesn't know me very well. um, I am married to a very beautiful woman who is actually in the back of the room, Brittany. Yeah! Uh, But we got engaged back in 2019, and we have been married for just about two and a half years now, coming up here soon. So. Uh, but I just want y'all to know that as I talk about my relationship and my engagement tonight, that's where I'm kind of coming from. Uh, the second, and this is what I really want to start tonight with, is this. While there are couples in this room who are engaged, we know that. And there are couples in this room who are very close to engagement, probably. But for the majority of us in this room, for you in this room, engagement may seem pretty far off if it's even something that you have a desire for. So before we jump into the topic of engagement tonight, we have to ask why, as either a single person in this room, or someone who's maybe in a fairly new relationship, should you care about engagement? Why worry about it now? Here are a few things to consider. Even if you aren't close to engagement, studies show that over 80% of the people alive today will be married before they're 40. So while you may not be there now, this is a stage that most of you walk through in your life. And if even not for yourself, as I said, there are engaged couples here tonight, here in CCBT, which means you are part of a community that has the opportunity to support and guide those couples through their time of engagement. So whether it is preparing yourself for that season to come, or so that you can help your friends through that season, knowing about engagement can be useful to you here and now. Now with that in mind, we can look at all the things involved with engagement. I'm gonna break it down into three categories here tonight. Uh, how to know, the proposal, and what's it for. We're going to start with how do you know. How do I know that I, or more importantly, we, if you're in a relationship, are ready to be engaged? Well, I could give you the fairly unhelpful advice of, you'll just know. (laughs) And yes, there is something to be said about, you'll know when it's time. But that phrase also gives a lot of pressure to momentary feelings. And it can exclude discernible markers in your relationship that can inform that decision. I could also give you the pretty much untrue advice of, if they're the one, you'll just, it'll just work out. It'll be perfect. It'll be amazing. But feel free to disagree with me, but I, I've come to believe there is more than just one good potential life partner out there for each of us. You will most likely meet, and maybe even date, plenty of great, amazing people who would make a great spouse. But there will come a point in one of your relationships in your life where you have to decide if that person is the one you want to commit your life to. And if that's, and that's actually the first marker that we're going to look at tonight for engagement, commitment. Are you ready to commit yourself to this person? To put it more practically, do you want to work through the problems and struggles of life with this person? I'm not saying are you able to, but do you want to? Do you want to work through the problems and struggles of life with this person? Do you want to make it work with them? Are you ready to resolve to stay with them even when it's hard, even when circumstances change? For Brittany and I, we had to kind of answer this question early. So we, we started dating and uh, we, you know, we had kind of a plan for our lives before that. We, we were far from where we are today. Uh, we had a very clear vision and that's not where we are today, and we're very happy about it. But when we first started dating, I was studying biochemistry. And we both assumed that I would end up working in a lab somewhere, probably not anywhere near Blacksburg. 
So then a couple of months later, when I came to Brittany and said, I would like to pursue ministry now, she had a decision to make in that. Was she willing to stick with me knowing that pursuing ministry meant significant changes to the lifestyle we would lead? Significant changes to the lifestyle we originally thought we would have together. Now, thankfully, she was and she has been my greatest supporter in that ever since. And I love her so much for that. And then, you know, a couple years later, Brittany made the same decision to make a huge career shift. And I was happy to love and support her through that as well. So significant changes will happen in your relationship, just as they've happened in ours. And this is one of the reasons I think people are hesitant of relationships that move too fast. If you have never had to face one of these crossroads while you're dating, then when they inevitably come, you may unfortunately come to realize you are committed to an idea and not to a person. So you need time to see which it is, to face challenges together, to make decisions together, and to see if you're really committed to one another or to the idea of that person. The last thing I want to say about commitment is this. Being committed to one another doesn't mean you can't question or doubt. You do not have to be all in 100% all the time. Just like you are allowed to have questions and doubts in your relationship with God, so can you too with your partner. Commitment is the act of choice to love them and stay with them even when you're not at 100%, even when you do have questions. And the important thing is that in those questions you come to them and you talk to them and you talk it out. And that leads to the next marker to say that you might be ready for engagement. Do you communicate well? <coughs> can you navigate conflict? Can you disagree in a way that actually brings you closer together? Now I'm the first to admit I don't always do this right or even well. Uh, I am still learning in how to communicate with Brittany in a really good way. In our relationship, both of us are on the quieter side. Neither of us are very talkative. But when we disagree, or have to make a decision, I'm usually the one to want to talk about it right then, right now. Quickly, let's figure this out, solve the problem, move on to the next thing. Brittany likes to take her time. She likes to think things through. She wants to make sure she has all the right words for what she wants to say, and to make sure that both of us are sure of what she's saying and she's being understood. And if there's any doubt of which of those is better, it says in Proverbs 12, 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongues of the wise bring healing. I think she might have it right in this case. And it has been a good challenge for me to slow down and to look and think about my words a few times before I say them. Because we don't want to wound one another. We want to heal each other with our words. We want to make sure that we are understood and to be heard without hurting the other person if possible. And if you don't think communication is important, the first thing you will do when you are engaged is plan the biggest party of your life. And if you don't think that requires a high level of communication, you are very, very wrong. And honestly, a couple who never disagrees is a little scary. Because that probably means one of two things. One of them's not being heard, or they aren't talking about the heavy parts of life. And it's those heavy parts of life that I want to talk about next. See, every one of us have broken parts. And for a relationship to be successful, a lot of those things need to be shared before going into engagement. To be ready for engagement, you will probably need to make it through some times of honest confession with one another. Trying to conceal the messy parts of ourselves, of our stories, from the person that you're supposed to be the closest with, that you want to spend the rest of your life with, is not a great way to start a marriage. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, because it is something that will vary highly, depending on your relationship and your context. But the when and the how, the when and the how we share our pasts, the wrongs done to us or done by us, will be different for each of us and depending on your situation. But I do have two suggestions in this. The first is this is not a date number one thing or even a date 10 thing. These are things to be shared over time as trust grows and that the idea of engagement is on the horizon. But they need to be shared eventually. Proverbs 28, 13, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And it's that last part that's the most important, because hopefully, when a confession is made, it is followed by something like this. I forgive you. I'm sorry that happened to you. I still love you. I still want you. 
Ephesians 4, 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God has forgiven you. We are called to be compassionate and forgive each other as we have been forgiven. The second is that for most of us, the person we are dating should not be the first person we talk to about all these things. Once you're married, you're going to be together, and they're going to be the person you are going deepest with, and you're going to be the most honest with. But in the meantime, you should have people in your life that you can share the hard stuff with. So that when you get to that point in a dating relationship, those friends, those advisors, those people in your life can help you navigate how and when to share that information with the person that you're dating. And that's why we, when we're ready to get engaged, we need to make sure we have community. I know the idea of community has come up in pretty much every single one of these topics uh, throughout the, our messages this semester. But honestly, it's just that important. And it will continue to be a part of every, every one of the conversations that we have surrounding relationships. But as we look at how important community is to engagement, uh, I thought it might be fun to share my own embarrassing dating story, just like Mike and Morgan did in their weeks. Um, so, uh, when Brittany and I first met, which was here at CCDT, uh, we were very quick to become close, uh, to become friends. And I will also say I was quite clueless. Uh, I think we both, on some level, knew we liked each other, uh, but I had no idea what was going on. Uh, I was not being intentional whatsoever. I was not navigating that well. It came so far as to, we went on a retreat, fall retreat actually, uh, back in, I guess, 2018. And there was a panel night and you were able to submit questions anonymously to be asked to all the campus ministers, of which one I was not at the time. And uh, someone, maybe Brittany, might have submitted a question saying, how do I pursue someone in my campus ministry? <laughs> I didn't think about that one at all. Uh, after we got back from that, still clueless as to what was going on between the two of us, uh, I was asked on a date by Brittany. She wasn't explicit in calling it a date, but she asked me to dinner Pretty good signal, but I didn't pick up on it. So I roll up to this dinner in basketball shorts, stained with paint, and an old Virginia Tech t-shirt. Yeah, I was bad. Classic. And she was looking incredible, all done up, cardigan, looking cute, all that kind of stuff. Ooh. And we walked down to dinner, and I include this the whole way. It was so bad as we ran into Morgan and one of the girls she was meeting with, and they're giggling the whole time, thinking this is a cute date. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to dinner. <laughs> Lewis. And it got so far as to, Aww. we went and helped with the Belmont Youth Group one night. And we were driving back, we pull into the parking lot back here, and it's just the two of us, we've dropped off everybody else. And she looks at me and says, I have something to tell you. I like you a lot. I would like this to be a thing. To which I responded, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I'm not proud of what I say. <laughs> and I've been working ever since to regain my status. Needless to say, Brittany is a very gracious and loving woman. There's a lot and a lot of forgiveness in our relationship. But what I did in those three days. First of all, we also walked back in and women's Bible study was awkwardly happening, so that was fun. Um, but I did not really intentionally seek her out to talk about that for three days after that comment. We talked, but not about that. Um, yeah, it was bad. But when I finally did, I sat down over coffee and said, yes, I would like to pursue this. I like you. I would like to see where this goes. But in those three days leading up to that, what I was doing is I was going to every person in my life and asking for guidance on this. Once she asked, I knew I liked her, but I knew I had fumbled the ball in that situation. <laughs> How did I get back after that? How do I navigate this well? How do I start a relationship but not mess up the community that we had built here? And as we move forward in dating and eventually to engagement, we also had wise friends who came along with, on, alongside us and asked us good questions to see if we were ready for engagement. In Song of Songs, we see uh, the friends of the soon-to-be-married couple that the book is all about doing just that. It says in Song of Songs 5.9, How is your beloved better than others, most beautiful woman? How is your beloved better than others that you so charge us? 
First of all, great job by the friends, hyping the girl up, most beautiful of the women. We love that. <laughs> but they are asking, why this guy? Why him? What's special about him? And Morgan did just that for us. She pulled us aside and she said, Brittany, why Brandon? And she pulled me aside and said, Brandon, why Brittany? And we had to ask those questions. We had to answer those questions. And she told us how she felt and she approved the engagement. But besides just friends and wise counselors, you also want to have good examples of marriage in your relationship. And this is one of those things that even if you are far from engagement, you can start working on now. Look for and surround yourself with great examples of marriage. Brittany and I have the benefit of having parents to look to, both for things that we want to copy and things that we don't. But we also had the benefit of having married couples to learn from here. We had both Mike and Carrie, and David and Jessica, and so many others who blessed us with a lot of wisdom as we made the journey towards marriage. So if you get to the point where you feel like you have a lot of these things, you have a high level of commitment to each other, you have great communication, you've made it through all those confessions, and you have the support of your community, you might be ready to go to the next step, the proposal. Before I jump into my advice on the proposal, I'll give you the Spark Notes version of our proposal. Mm -hmm. So I chose a Sunday to make sure that we would be all nice and dressed up and pretty for the pictures. Um, and then I took her on a nice drive after church, uh, all through the mountains. Uh, we stopped at all of the, uh, if you ever heard of them, like the quilt squares on the sides of the barns. Um, just drove the whole way, just talking, having a good time. And the whole thing ended at a park bench at Heritage Park. <laughs> Uh, which was our bench. That's where we have one of our early dates. We would often go out there and look at the stars. And so we're, we're sitting on the bench and I have this long, like, uh, kind of confession of my love and how I'm ready to marry her and I'm so excited. And then I say, I wish I could post to you right now. And we left. Oh. And we had planned a dinner. <laughs> and we draw, I know. <laughs> We had planned a dinner with some friends of ours, <clears throat> actually with the Breeds at BRCC. And so we drove out, and we got there a little bit early. Uh, so we said, hey, how about we go walk through the field? Which at this time, we had already talked about possibly getting married at the camp. So we go up there, and what she did not know is I had had them stage the field for me. So in the field was waiting a quilt, uh, which was a wedding ring quilt of interlocked rings. And I walked her out to the quilt, and I started to do a different speech, profess my love yet again. Um, and my plan was to, in that moment, get down and propose. There's only one problem. The camp butts up to a cow field. And apparently, I picked the season in which they separate the mothers from the calves, which meant that they were crying at like max volume to the point of I could not even hear my own thoughts. So we're standing there and I'm trying to have this beautiful moment and propose to Brittany, and it's just constantly cows in the background. So I get pause on the whole situation. I grabbed the quilt over my shoulder and walked to the other side of the field, laid back down, and I start fresh. It's, and I proposed. And she said yes. So, very exciting. Uh, I also had a lovely candlelight dinner waiting inside uh, with chocolate cake and pasta and the works. It was a lovely thing. I but now, let's talk about proposals in general. See, it is technically the quickest part of the whole process, but it can also, as you can see, be the most nerve-wracking part of the whole thing. So I'll start with my most important piece of advice surrounding the proposal. So listen up if you plan to get down on one knee. The proposal should be a surprise, but it should not be a shock. <laughs> By that I mean, the first conversation you have about engagement should not be asking, will you marry me in front of 10,000 people at a sporting event? You've seen the videos, don't do it. In my opinion, you should be talking about engagement long before you ever have a ring. They should know it's coming, but just not know the exact time and place. The only other piece of pre-proposal pre advice I will offer is when it comes to talking to the family. And I acknowledge that's not for everyone. 
Your family may not be involved in your relationship, or your family may just look very different. Maybe you think that's old-fashioned. But hopefully, you've done the work to surround yourself with a good community. And there will probably be someone in that community that you want to bring into the loop and ask for the blessing of, even if it's just a close friend. And I am being intentional in saying blessing because really, you're not looking for permission, you're looking for the support of the people around you. But then, all of that, you got that locked down, maybe it's time to pop the question. And hopefully, if you've done all that well, they say yes. <laughs> so now you're engaged, and everyone is so excited, and it's finally socially acceptable to start planning a wedding, even though I will say for us, we had a wedding date, the honeymoon booked, and a lot of other things already planned before I put a ring on the finger. Uh, we like to plan ahead. Uh, <laughs> but I think at this point, right after the proposal, it's easy to think of the wedding as the end goal. But really, the proposal is just the start of a very important season of your life. And now we get to what is engagement for? Well, engagement is primarily a time to align your lives with each other. Ben Stewart, the author of the book that inspired the series, says this, the brief season of engagement allow, exists to allow couples to focus on the complexities of bringing two lives together as one. It is not simply a time to work on the wedding, rather a time to work on the marriage. To paraphrase in Brittany's words, don't let there be more planning of the wedding than planning of the marriage. Yes, you have a wedding to plan, but more importantly, you have two lives to begin to align into one. And it takes time and a lot of conversation. So here are a few things I would suggest you should be working on during this, the season of engagement to align your lives together into one. Faith. The hope would be that before you get engaged, you have some clarity on where each of you are in your faith journey. So now you can start to talk about what that looks like as a couple. Where are you going to find Christian community? What kind of church do you want to go to? How are you going to live out your faith, faith together? What is your family going to stand for in your faith? If you're going to be a family of hospitality, you're going to open your home to people. If you're going to be a family of generosity, um, any of those things. And if you plan to have children, if that's something you want, how do you want to explore faith with them? Where are, where are we in our faith now, and where do we want to go in all of this? These are conversations about faith to have during engagement. There's family. I think the biggest conversation to have here is how, inf how involved are our families going to be with our marriage? This is the chance to set boundaries. Because in most cases, they will be part of your lives for a long time, and you want to get it right early. Set those boundaries early. For Brittany and I, we decided Christmas. That's ours. Our parents don't get to mess with that. We're going to be home Christmas Day to the best of our ability. We're not going to travel, we're going to stay home, and we're going to celebrate just the two of us. And as we navigate possibly having children, we're going to do the same. Have them at home Christmas Day, just our little unit. But that may not have happened if we hadn't made that decision during engagement. There's finances. How are you going to take two previously separate financial situations and make them one? Beyond that, what are your goals? How are you going to use your money? Do you have debt to pay off? Are you going to try to save, save and buy a house? Are you going to focus on travel and just to have fun for the first few years? What are you going to do with your money together? Then, talk about how you want to give back. What are the causes you both really care about? The ones that you want to support? Are there people in your life that you feel like you need to take care of? Do a little dance back there with the phone. Um, but my advice for this is don't just seek the married couple that has the advice about relational marriage. Seek out also the couple that has great financial wisdom. The one that knew how to steward their money well throughout their marriage. And it has actually blessed their marriage. Learn from them as well. And then your future. How do we want to celebrate holidays? Are we going to use some old traditions or new traditions? White lights or multicolored lights? How many Christmas trees are we going to have? You got to answer that question, Mike? Ten <laughs> is the correct answer. Uh, are we a matching PJ's type of family? I don't know. When will we visit the in-laws? How and where are we going on vacation? And again, if you want kids, and hopefully you've already had that conversation before you get engaged, how many? How soon? 
What night is date night going to be? There are so many conversations to have during your time of engagement. But I would use these four categories as starting points as you navigate that season. Sit down. Have a whole afternoon. Have a little coffee <coughs> dedicated to just talking about what the season of engagement is going to look like for you. Because this is the time to plan and put the work in for your marriage to come. And to start to tie up tonight, I want to go back to the beginning. What I said at the very start. Most of you are not engaged. But most of you do know a couple who are. And I hope that you can use what you've heard here tonight to help them walk through that. How can I, as a person who knows this engaged couple, who cares about them deeply, come alongside them? How can I help them through this short but pivotal time of engagement? How can I be a supportive part of their community? And for yourself, if you are pursuing marriage in your life, regardless of how far or how close you are, how can you start now to better prepare yourself for that time? Uh, I'm going to pray for us, and then I'll welcome the worship team back up. Uh, God, I just thank you uh, for this opportunity to share about this time that was a blessing for me in my life. Um, and I just ask that as we both prepare ourselves for that time in our lives, uh, if it comes along, uh, that you would just be working through us in those times. But also remind us to come alongside uh, those that are in that season of engagement, that we are helping them to figure out if they're ready, or if they are ready and they're engaged, that we can uh, just help them to navigate and align their lives into one. Uh, and just remember, Lord, help us to remember, Lord, that in all of this, we are called to be like you, uh, to love our significant other, our partner in life, as the way that you love us. Uh, so, in our son's name, we pray. Amen.